Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi and today we continue with our topic of discussion and this is uh, nitrogen and its compounds. So today I would like us to discuss one of the compounds of nitrogen and this is uh, ammonia. <coughs> Uh, when you talk of ammonia as one of the compounds of nitrogen, uh, we can say that uh, ammonia exists at room temperature as a gas. And this gas is uh, a combination of nitrogen and hydrogen in the ratio of 1 is to 3. So basically, the formula for ammonia is NH3. To show that uh, for every one atom of nitrogen, there are three atoms of hydrogen. So we are saying that uh, ammonia exists naturally as a gas consisting of <coughs> nitrogen and hydrogen in the ratio of 1 is to 3. In the ratio of 1 is to 3. That means that for every one nitrogen, uh, there are three uh, hydrogens. So the next thing that we are going to look at is how is ammonia gas prepared in the laboratory? laboratory preparation of ammonia gas and uh, ammonia is prepared uh, by a reaction between an ammonium salt and a strong base and it actually happens that uh, ammonia being a weak base is more volatile it's more volatile that means it vaporizes easily and therefore, it can be displaced by the less volatile bases, such as sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and so on and so forth. So let's look at laboratory preparation of ammonia gas. So we are saying that uh, ammonia is prepared by heating a mixture of ammonium chloride, although we can use any ammonium salt and any strong base, e.g. and calcium hydroxide. <clears throat> and that preparation is founded on the fact that uh, ammonia is more volatile. Ammonia is more volatile, vaporizes easily and is therefore displaced by the less volatile less volatile bases less volatile bases e.g. potassium hydroxide calcium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide so the equation for the reaction, so we are saying that uh, you heat a mixture of ammonium chloride plus calcium hydroxide. Uh, 
and in the process you will come up with ammonia gas plus water plus calcium chloride. So you're going to have a, a diagram showing how that uh, preparation is done. So in the diagram, we have, uh, we are heating, that's the heat, a mixture of ammonium chloride plus calcium hydroxide. And uh, it happens that the flask should be put in a slanting position uh, to prevent the water that is formed from cooling back into the flask because if it cools back into the hot flask it may make the flask to crack so that's why the round bottomed flask has to be put in a slanting position then after the gas has been uh, prepared it is uh, passed through a drying tower that is lined these are drying tower that is lined with calcium oxide also known as quick lime and quick lime here is the drying agent and then of course the ammonia gas is collected by upward delivery so we have ammonia gas collected by upward delivery. So what tells us that uh, uh, the gas jar is full? What tells us that the gas jar is full of ammonia gas? We put a moist red litmus paper here. So we have a moist red litmus paper and if the paper turns blue that's an indication that uh, the gas is full and then we can remove that particular gas jar and place another one so the diagram here is the laboratory preparation of ammonia so so to mention that or to explain that further we are saying that uh, during preparation the flask containing the mixture is placed in a slanting position in a slanting position as indicated by the diagram to prevent water from flowing back into the flask because it can cause cracking can make the flask to crack
So that's one of the precautions when carrying out that experiment. Then we are saying that uh, ammonia gas is then passed through the drying tower or the drying chamber containing calcium oxide as the drying agent. So the calcium oxide is a drying agent to absorb any moisture that is there. The gas is then collected by upward delivery. also known as downward displacement of air. And this is done because the gas is less dense than air. Ammonia gas is a very light gas, is a less dense gas is less dense than air. Uh, to know that uh, uh, the ammonia gas has filled the gas jar, we have said that uh, we'll place a moist red litmus paper at the mouth of the gas jar. And if it turns blue, then we know that uh, ammonia gas is full. So we can say that uh, a moist red litmus is used to show that the gas is full or the gas jar when it turns blue because ammonia gas is alkaline. Ammonia gas is alkaline. So basically, uh, that uh, diagram shows how the preparation of uh, ammonia gas is done. Uh, let's see something about the physical properties. of ammonia uh, one is that uh, ammonia is a colorless gas with a pungent choking smell with a pungent choking smell in fact it smells like urine, like very strong urine. Uh, <clears throat> so we have that. We have also said that uh, the gas is less dense than air, hence collected by upward delivery. as can be seen from the diagram. The gas is highly soluble in water. It's a highly soluble gas. <coughs> Excuse me. It's highly soluble in water. In fact, we say that uh, one centimeter of water So one cubic centimeter of water can dissolve up to 800 cubic centimeters of the gas. 
So that shows that the gas is highly, uh, highly soluble. You need a very small amount of water to dissolve quite a big volume of ammonia gas. And number four is that uh, the gas turns a moist a red litmus paper to blue indicating that it is alkaline indicating that the gas is alkaline and of course uh, this is the test or this is the chemical test for ammonia gas so those are the physical uh, properties of uh, ammonia gas a colorless gas with a pungent choking smell less dense than air highly soluble in water and turns a moist red litmus to blue our assignment for the day So the assignment, uh, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction of ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide. And lastly, number two, state the chemical test for ammonia gas. So we'll stop there. Until next time, goodbye.